You can use the modulation and effect sections of the sampler to create an artificial attack for a sound. And you can make it so that the timing of that is variable, either controlled by the user or assigned randomly. However, if you're relying on the actual sample waveform and using the attack provided within that, then you're always stuck with the timing that was recorded there initially. And there's nothing really that you can do about that. Now you're probably thinking, well, you can use the delay column in the phrase and pattern editors. That's precisely what it's for. And that's true, but you can only ever assign randomization to that by going in and using this operation, but it will always be the same all the way through the song. Plus, that is a manual thing that the user has to do every time. So if you're using this for something like a bass drum, you would have to do this for every pattern all the way through the entire song. And what I want is true randomization and for it to happen automatically so that the user can just use the instrument and it will happen by itself. And by the way, if you're interested in that previous scenario, which I just dismissed, where things can be predictably random, they're created randomly in the first place, but will always play out in the same fashion each time the song is played through, then on the official Renoise channel, there's a video there precisely called that. And there's a lot of cool ideas and examples going through. It's a great video if you're interested in this subject, so have a look. So the most obvious way of doing random sample start timings is to offload the delay timings into phrases. And that's the method we'll be exploring here. Now this will require creating uh, different phrases for each timing that you want. And in order to know how many you can get, you first need to understand how the phrases feature works. Because this is directly tied to uh, the Redux plugin and the limitations from that come from MIDI because you can use it in other DAWs. And there, the other DAW can assign MIDI messages, which are limited to 128 different values. So you can have 126 phrases because value zero will set the phrases to off and just use the simple notes from the samples. And a value of 127 will put it into key map mode, leaving you 126 phrases to do whatever you want with in program and key map mode, but you can only have 126 different ones doing different things because of that. So what's going to happen is 126 phrases will be created, each one ascending by two in the delay column. Now, because this is going to take quite some time, here's one that I made earlier. Now, there's actually an issue here that you need to be aware of with regards to the phrase LPB timing, because this is going to affect the speed at which the notes and the notes delay column is going to affect the speed of activation. And the real issue is that you cannot make changes to this en masse to all of the phrases at once. So you'll want to set this to something other than four, or most people will make do with four. It's the best setting for almost everybody. But if you do need to make changes to that, do it for the first phrase and then duplicate from there, because otherwise you're going to have to do it individually. So how do you make the phrases automatically selected at random? Well, insert an LFO and an instrument macros device. Set the LFO to random mode and the destination to instrument macros phrase programs. Now it will select from all of the available phrases at random. The amplitude and offset parameters can be used to select the range that you want from the available phrases. However, note that if you're using what will be the standard settings of amplitude 100% and offset of 50, because you want that to be central, don't actually use 50%. 
make sure you've set it to 49.999% because you don't want to uh, accidentally select key map mode, which is what happens when an amplitude of exactly 100% is sent. So to remove that, just move it down very slightly to 49.999. Now the frequency should be set to 8 LPC and then every line a random value will be selected. You can raise this higher if you want, so you can uh, incorporate re-triggers or something like that and get random values for those as well, but anything lower than 8 will change less than one time per line, which you don't really want. There is another issue here because we're using phrases, and that is that they are monophonic when triggered within the same column in the pattern editor. And since we're using the bass drum like here, and we would always want it to be within the same column, that's going to be an issue, and you can actually get around that by just turning on the one-shot toggle for that sample. And this is great, but it only ever varies the timing in one direction. That is, after the line has been triggered. What we're really after is for the note not to be precisely struck directly on the beat, not just after, but also before. And for that, you can make use of the track's delay parameter. A lot of people forget this is here, and what this does is it will make this particular track either before or after the other tracks in its timing which will give us exactly what we want here. It can go to minus 100 milliseconds or positive 100 milliseconds which gives us 200 to play with but that may not be correct for the song's tempo because each line is going to be variable depending on what the tempo is and 200 almost certainly not going to be correct. So how do we figure that out? Well, use this formula. You take the BPM, which is 140, divided by 60, multiply it by the LPB, which is 4, and then it's 1 divided by that previous result. That is the length of time for a line. Now, what we have access to with the note delays is half of that, because we want the note delay of 80, which will be precisely in the middle, which will be right on the line. And so the timings before and after that are going to be half of this result, which in this case is 53.571 milliseconds. Obviously, this isn't ideal because this only works for that particular song tempo. But as far as I'm aware, fine tuning it like this is the only way to make it work in this precise manner. And for the next video, I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do. And it's completely different from this one. I'll be messing with everything in a very different way, and that will be coming soon. But in the meantime, if you don't want to create all of those phrases by yourself, but you're interested in using this, then the song file for this will be available in the video description, and you can download it there.